Remember when the great explosion of the Klon clones happened? I think Electro Harmonics just released the Soul Food. At that point, I don't think anyone really had mass manufactured any sort of Klon clone type of circuit that, eh, that most people knew of. But that's actually not true. And this wasn't widely known until a certain pedal was reversed. But there was actually a Klon clone many years before that that was popular for a bit in some circles, but never to the uh, never to the heights that the uh, electro harmonics pedal really got to. And at that point, that got so popular, everyone then be became uh, you know sort of enamored with this Klon circuit. Uh, a fellow named Martin, I believe, on uh, one of the DIY forums, found or had a Klon or found one or something and reverse engineered it, posted the schematics, and it went everywhere after that. Then everyone started making Klon clones, and these days you pretty much can't throw a rock without hitting one, as long as you're near pedal boards, I suppose. If you're near a lake, you're probably not gonna hit a Klon. But anyways, let's get into some pedal talk. So there's two different pedals I wanna show you today. The first one is the one that was actually, literally, a Klon clone, except they changed some values, so it doesn't sound exactly like it, but it was, as far as circuit blocks, as far as you look at the circuit and looking at uh, the topology, it really is a Klon clone. And that is the Bonsai Cold Fusion. Now, this was popular, I'm going to say like 2002 or three. I don't recall exactly, but it was some years ago. Super popular on the gear forums, not widely known um, among the masses. So if you went to a guitar center or something like that at that point, they probably didn't have these because it, you know, they just weren't that ubiquitous at that point. But it's pretty cool. Same sort of dials, of course, but since the values are completely different, it's gonna sound different. And then the second pedal we have is the Zoom Power Drive. Now, this is not actually a Klon clone, but during the same time period, 20 years ago or so, this pedal was often thought to be a Klon clone. I don't know why, but some folks did think that. And in fact, on uh, the gear page in particular, I remember everyone had to have the power drive. It was so awesome. Everyone loved it. And uh, it, not that it's a bad pedal, but it just has its own thing. I would say it's nothing like a Klon clone, but it's still pretty cool in its own right. Enough talking about it. Let's play a little bit through it and let me see what you think. And first of all, I'm playing through an HDRX. Uh, this is a Paul Reed Smith amp, pretty much like a 20 watt Plexi. I love it. It's great. It's inexpensive. If you can find one, uh, I bought this one used actually, and it's, it's fantastic. I paid like 600 bucks for it. Great amp. Anyways, clean clone, clean tone rather. <laughs> So something you might have noticed is this gain here. When I turned this gain actually at about three o'clock or so, 
It got super crunchy, right? A bit brighter, more gainy, and then when I turned it all the way up, it kind of doled out, right? My theory is that since all the values change and there's so much going on in this particular type of circuit, you have different signals kind of flowing in all into one point and they all sum together and then it spits out into the EQ section basically. And I think changing those values did some phase stuff. So kind of messed with some phase depending where you have that gain, the gain pot. Because remember this gain pot in this, in the uh, Klon style circuit, this is controlling two different things. When you're all the way down here, you're basically just a really loud clean boost. That's really all it is. And as you turn it up, you're turning sort of down most of the clean while you're turning up the gain. So when you're all the way down, your gain is all the way down, but you're also sort of panning to the clean boost circuit. So it's doing two different things at once and then vice versa as you turn it up. More gain, a lot less clean blend, but still with a little bit of clean blend on the typical circuit. I think, I'll have to double check with the schematic in a minute, but I think that whenever we turn that gain pot up, we actually don't have enough cleans in there and sort of it sort of messes the phase up, which basically it ends up changing the sound and sort of, I wouldn't say screws up the sound, but makes it sound like it, uh, you know, a little less, less bright, a little bit more dull, not as much gain because you kind of lose some harmonics there. So that's uh, the Bonsai Cold Fusion. Now let's switch over here to the Zoom Power Drive. Now this is a completely not a clone type of circuit, but like I said, this is one that many people thought was a clone circuit, was a clone circuit years ago. <laughs> So my guess is the reason why a lot of folks thought it did the clone thing is because, and why they thought it was a clone clone is because the gain when it is all the way down is super clean. It's really, really clean, just like you'd find on that clone circuit. So that might be one reason, um, but it's got two EQs, right? It's got a high and a low, uh, which <laughs> as you can see my highs, I have that way down. Like it's like nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, something like that. And I'm turning my lows up quite a bit just because I kind of need it. And also the tapers are funky. So normally when I'm designing something, I really like the, a sweet spot to be as close to noon as I can. And in analog, you can't always get it just at noon. So you, but you're shooting for that. You're kind of shooting to get a sweet spot around noon on the EQ dials, just because that's the way most people will, when they plug in a pedal, they usually turn everything up at noon. The gain as well, that was really funky. So it's, it was almost like clean, 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 a little bit of dirt around one o'clock and you get up around four o'clock and it's like, bam, there's all the gain, all of it, one little tiny little space. So that's something I would completely change if I was redoing that circuit totally. So overall, I mean, it's a great pedal. I'm actually surprised that more people don't do more of these type of circuits because you could really do some changes, some pretty minor changes and make it sound fantastic. For example, I say minor, just changing the type of pots, just the, the taper of the potentiometers, that'll make a massive difference. That's not even really changing part values. You're just changing where noon is basically. All right, let's take a look at the schematics for both of these pedals and really kind of dive into some of the nerdy details. 
All right, we're gonna look at the schematics and get into some nerdy details, but we're not gonna do it like an engineer would. So if you're an engineer and you wanna know the math behind it, you're not gonna find it here. We're gonna look at the schematic like a guitarist, like a musician, and we're gonna talk about the sound of things, right? So let's dig into it. What you're looking at right here is the actual, well, this is a schematic of a clon. So this is kind of what it looks like. You have an input stage, like you can see there. You have uh, some op amp stuff going on there. You have a summing op amp. I'll explain all this in a minute. Tone control, and you have the volume control. And then you have this little line here, which basically represents the clean tone whenever it's in bypass, because the original Klon is not a true bypass pedal. It's a buffered bypass. So this little doohickey here, the little triangle, this stuff, this just indicates a buffer, a buffer circuit. You can think of this like Lego blocks. It's really easy to think of it like that. These are just blocks, circuit blocks that we use to build pedal circuits. Now, from there, the signal goes into a few different places. Um, and we're gonna assume the pedal's on. You, the signal goes down through this network and kind of goes into this potentiometer. This is one half of the gain. Then it goes over to here and it splits into two different other networks. So these are all things that affect sound. This is all just a clean path. Okay, so that's all the clean stuff that's going on right there. And so this is always on. Now, as you turn that gain control up, so now the clean is going to go down. Again, this is like a volume. So it's like turning the volume on the clean circuit down. Also, it's going to increase this. So it's going to turn this one up because keep in mind this particular type of gain potentiometer, it's two in one, it does two different things at once. So we're increasing gain here whenever we turn the gain up. We're decreasing the clean signal that goes into the next stage here. Just to recap here, buffer, our signal path splits for the clean section, continues going for the dirty section, and then we have the diode. So that as long as this gains, as long as this gain controls up, these diodes are going to clip. And uh, you know, that's the sound of distortion, is what clipping is. All these signals kind of meet up right here. There's a 47k resistor there, but they meet up and they go into this next summing op amp. Again, this is another circuit block. This is just a summing op amp. And so all these signals just kind of melt together and then all get combined into one and then get shoved out into the tone control. So this other circuit block here right after it is just a tone control. And um, then it goes out to a standard volume control. This is normally how we do volume. So that is the Klon circuit. Let's take a look at the Bonsai Cold Fusion. Now, as you'll often find with schematics, this is drawn a little bit differently, but it's still kind of the same thing. Uh, I've eliminated the switching and all the power stuff, so this is just the signal path. But still, we're going into, here's our first buffer. Now, before it was down here, now they've just routed it up top. Still the same signal, they, they just drew it different. That's all it is. But this is the clean section that then goes into the fancy filtering for the clean signal. So that's that's all clean stuff right there. Our distorted signal still goes through this op amp here, this gain stage. It's still still doing that. Still has the diodes there. And again, all the signal, uh, the clean signals and the dirty signals that all meet up at the same part and go into this summing op amp again. So yet again, same thing. And then the tone control right after it just like we saw with the Klon schematic. And then the volume controls. That is our volume control that goes out and then goes into the output jack. So same topology, same skeleton, just completely different values that they used here because you know it's it sounds different, it reacts different. And like I said, with that gain control doing what it's doing, because you, you do have different values all over the place. You know, a lot of this stuff is completely different than what you'd find with the uh, Klon schematic. So my guess is that there's some phasing issues going on whenever all these signals combine and on certain spots, it just doesn't work together. And you find this sometimes as you're designing circuits, sometimes that does happen. And so you have to figure out how to get that out of the circuit. That's just part of circuit design. Now let's look at the Zoom power driver by comparison. Now this is a little bit of a fuzzy schematic because it's old. Our signal is gonna come in. Now it's gonna go through, this is basically an electronic switch. So that's just a switch that's gonna help bypass it. But our signal is gonna come in and it's gonna go into an op amp stage. Then it's gonna go past a low filter. This low filter is right there. Almost like you'd find with a tube screamer, kind of but it's not a tube screamer circuit. Now our diodes on the Klon, they were clipping to ground. They were hard clipping, what would technically be a hard clipping circuit, 
But the way the circuit's created, it's really not so much hard clipping. When you put it on an oscilloscope, it's fairly, fairly soft as far as uh, clipping goes, even though generally that's where we put diodes when we want to hard clip. I know that sounds confusing, but that's just electronics for you. So our circuit comes out of this low pass filter and goes into the next stage, which is basically just an EQ circuit. This is just what we call a simulated inductor or a gyrator circuit. So it's just adding some EQ. I'm not sure off the top of my head what that is without doing the math or putting it in spice, but it is an EQ circuit of some sort. From here, we're going back into a buffer because we also have a buffered path here. So this is a clean signal that's kind of blending in into this next stage. So it is kind of borrowing off of the idea of what the Klon's doing, which is fascinating. It's almost like if Bill Finnegan, who's the designer of the Klon, if he took what, if he like tried to make a tube screamer as complicated as possible, and that's what the Klon kind of sort of roughly is, kind of maybe, then this is like Zoom's attempt to taking the Klon circuit and just making it different, making a cake in a different way. So, you know, instead of strawberry cake, maybe it's chocolate cake or something like that. So it's still kind of, you still have these two different paths that this gain control that is doing two different things, it works kind of the same way. As gain turns up, clean turns down. As clean turns down, gain turns up. Uh, but part of the problem, well, I was talking about taper. So these are linear pots. You could just change that potentiometer to something a little bit different, like probably an audio taper or something. And it was it's gonna change where that gain comes in and where, like, like I said, where noon is. So noon on the stock pedal might actually move to like 10 o'clock by just changing the taper. Let's keep going here. So our clean signal is going in this way. Our dirty signal is going through all this stuff, going through a little EQ stage and then going in this way. They get combined in this buffer. And then from this buffer, we're gonna go out into the EQ stuff. So this is now an active EQ as well. Uh, the lows are pretty much like a simulated inductor as well. They're like a gyrator, but we're using a transistor instead of an op amp. And then this is all part of that EQ stage right there. And then after this EQ stage, we're just basically going into just sort of a boost circuit. It's just a gain stage, fairly clean gain. And um, it's just increasing the level. Now, interesting, the level, like this this gain here of this stage is also, this is also one of those dual pots that control two things at once. So it's also using like a typical volume control like we find the passive kind, and it's increasing the gain all at the same time. One of the things about the Klon that people love is it has so much volume on it, so much clean volume, um, because that's, you're always kind of fighting with too much volume and too much gain and too much noise and all this stuff. Uh, so they just kind of did it a different way. They allowed it to get very clean and have a lot more clean uh, volume or get distorted. So it's kind of a clever thing. It's a really cool circuit. I, I personally, I love whenever someone takes a concept and says, well, that's one way to do it, but what's another way to skin that cat, as they say around here? Well, this is another way to skin that cat indeed. So yeah, awesome stuff. I, if you know of anyone that makes this style circuit, I want to buy it. So let me know in the comments if someone else makes a clone like this. Uh, I want to try them out. It's a cool circuit. So overall, both of these are great sounding pedals. I would love to have either one of these on my board. I probably would. I would love to go through the cold fusion and really kind of dial in some values and just see what I come up with. That's I've never really used the values for the actual cold fusion in a, in a Tumnus style circuit. So uh, so I've never like modified a Tumnus to be that, but that might be something interesting to do. Another thing, like I said, I'd like to do is maybe see what I can do with the power drive circuit. That might be a fun one to mess with as well. And, and if you like messing with this stuff, or if you want to learn how to mess with this stuff, you can always see this video probably in this area right here somewhere. And that's going to take you to a video that talks about learning how guitar pedal circuits work and, you know, how the circuit blocks work and how we can learn that in a very easy way. See you next time.